I'm set up on a little small bean field, kind of tucked away away from the road. Uh, it's a spot I hunted last year. I had a doe come out of this tree line on the far side last year. And uh, figured I'd come back and try it again this year. I had a little bit of excitement last night. Unfortunately, my camera died and I wasn't able to get it on camera. Uh, missed my first velvet buck. And uh, Jacob was actually two, three hundred yards away from me down the stand of corn and after I missed several times the deer kept coming closer and uh, Jacob made a shot we got blood last night we're gonna go back and track it when we get out of the woods this afternoon because we didn't have no luck finding it last night but we're gonna sit here this morning and see what shows up hopefully we can drag one out and go get another one too y'all stick with us and it was obvious that there was no way I hit that deer not with a 300 and he wasn't bleeding But when I shot he just took off bolting. He didn't act like it hit him or nothing So yeah. I wasn't I sat there for the longest time. I thought I don't want to sit here and have another deer come out and shoot the dang thing <laughs> And I've already got one dead. That would be bad. And I was I just given up and I was fixing to set my tripod up to just watch over here the rest of the evening <laughs> And I heard I'm looking at you through the binoculars. I can see your gun go off, and then I hear the bullet. He ran over this way, out in the middle of the beans. A couple times he started walking again. And I, I remember I, I set my thing up on him, and I was like, where is, where exactly is Jeremy? And I remember he was he was out here, and you were there, so. I was watching you, and I made sure I got out of the way. <laughs> Cause I knew what was coming. <laughs> I just told him everybody things got Western really quick. Could you see me waving my hat saying, shoot the deer? <laughs> no. I didn't know what you meant, but I was like, if he gets any closer to him, I'm not going to shoot him. And he stopped, and I put the freaking scope where I thought he should be. You know, I figured you might be out of bullets. I heard four I was, shots. I was dead out. I didn't have no more in my bag, and I was like, I can't do nothing. Shoot the deer. <laughs> <laughs> that was my only hope. <laughs> Let's go put some hands on. I got blood back here when I was walking did he through. Cross the beans? He's in the corn. Oh, so he made it. He, it looked like it crippled him out there. It did, but he fell as soon as he came out of the beans. He fell into the. Did into this grass him, right here oh yeah i heard him fall i heard him run through the the corn just a little bit and then silent but i've got blood where he'd come out of the beans he fell into the grass and there's a big pile of blood and then there's just great blood on the corn stalks i didn't go look into the corn but there's good blood right at the first of it uh, he got hit with a 300 he probably got hit by you at one point too who knows well i guess we'll split that taxidermy that's bill it. yeah that's right <laughs> let's go find him We're headed in this afternoon. It's about 94 degrees right now. About five o'clock in the afternoon, so we got a couple hours before the sun starts to set. I wanted to be at that far edge of this corn, but I pulled up to park and there was already a truck in my spot, so I'm walking down this road to get on the uh, edge of this point down here and watch the back side of the corn see if anything comes out of the corn or stands up in the beans this afternoon hopefully I can make it that long it's hot we're gonna walk in here and get set up see what the afternoon holds
just hanging out in that drainage ditch. I'm gonna keep my eyes on this drainage ditch pretty hard. I'm pretty sure that's how the deer use this field and get into this stuff behind me. Well, it's the last morning of the hunt. <clears throat> Yesterday afternoon, I was up here on this ridge behind me, and uh, right at dark, I walked down the hill to look and see what I could see off this edge because I wanted to check it out. I wound up seeing a doe, or two does and a decent eight point down here. And uh, they just eased down this road bed in front of me, and I backed out after they got by. I didn't have a shot, so. We're back in here this morning, see if he does the same thing, and hopefully we can level the playing field. I got Wendell back here filming for me this morning. Hopefully we can get it done. We're down to the wire. Y'all stick with us.
First velvet down, right there. Where did he come from? Dude, he comes straight up out of this stuff. He just stood up. That's the deer I saw yesterday afternoon. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> oh, I just made a video about you being asleep. Oh, dead. <laughs> I was like, deer, deer, deer. And you just sat there. I'm like, what am I gonna do? And then I, it happened and I'm like, oh God. I had it. <laughs> I ain't been that jacked up killing the deer in a while. I come out here this afternoon, or yesterday afternoon. I walked down here and seen two does and a decent buck and uh, decided we was gonna come back this morning. The does came through right after daylight and uh, figured the buck was gonna be right behind him. But he obviously laid in his bed till he got warm and then stood up. My cameraman back here, he was asleep on me when this buck popped out. And I thought I missed my opportunity to shoot him. So I throwed some lead down range just to just try to get him to stop. And sure enough, he ran and stopped the broadside. And I'm not sure that we got the shot on camera, but we have a dead velvet buck, and I've been trying to do this for a while. So we're fixing to go down here and put our hands on him. He literally just like, I guess he came up out of there. No, he was down here for a while. He yeah, ran, he was because he had to run. He ran up, up this. Yeah. Dude, he wasn't 40 yards from us. No, he wasn't. Like an awesome chair set up up there. We're so out there. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Dude, he's tall. Like, that thing's just a toad. deer I've ever killed in my life. And he's fuzzy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I never never had that chance either. He's just tall, like just yeah. straight up tall. Yeah. And the mass at his base. God. He's got six inch bases, every bit of it. That's insane. Absolutely insane. Golly, that's awesome. Nice. It's just tall. That's, that's pretty cool right that's there, that's too. Oh, yes, yeah. Dude, that is so awesome. You don't know how long I've wanted to build it on the wall. It's going to be a good one, that's for sure. Yeah. This is like a bucket list right here to me. <laughs> Dang it, man. It's almost lost a summer coat already. Mm -hmm. Man, I don't <laughs> can't believe it, dude. I'm in shock. I can't believe how he's how his rack is though. It's it's tight, mm -hmm. but it's just dude. Look at that right there. I mean, that's a. 10 inch G2. That cool one's, too. I believe that one's going forward. It's going to be a split. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know, it may not because they ain't got much longer in build it. That build is awful tight. Like he needs it after last season, <laughs> and then after how this season starts, that he needs a little bit of redemption. He's a toad, dude. He's got like six inch dude, faces. Dude, his body is a toad. Yeah. When he saw the pictures, like, dude, he's a big buck. Dude, yeah. <laughs> Holy cow, dude, he's tall. Yeah, he's a stud. So yesterday afternoon, I was hunting this bean field up here on top of the hill. Seen a few does come through, nothing really great. Right before dark, I decided to walk down this road bed right here, check this bottom. I'd seen that there was a pond down here and some beans and a lot of CRP grown up. I walked around the corner and I seen two does and I seen this buck standing here. And I made a plan this morning to get in here super early. The plan paid off. The does were bedded right here close. They got up right after first light and eased through the pond, drank some water. And I was just starting to lose hope. It's getting hot outside. The buck stood up out of his bed 40 yards from us. And my camera guy was asleep. I had to wake <laughs> him up to get the shot on camera. And finally got him woke up. And I rang one shot off to try to get the deer to stop after he started running. He finally stopped broadside right here and I killed him at 83 yards. This is a, something I've wanted for a long time. It's a surreal moment for now, honestly, to be able to wrap my hands around some velvet. Feels good. You can almost wrap your hands around it. Yeah, you? I can almost wrap my hands around it. <laughs> it's got some unreal character. The, the bases on this deer are just phenomenal and it just follows all the way up. Definitely a dream deer for me. It's a bucket list hunt. I hope y'all enjoy this episode. Feel free to like, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Hope y'all have a good day. <laughs> Don't break the velvet! No. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> He's old man compared to you. Oh, I'm an old man. You're just a young whippersnapper. That's awesome. Man. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome.